Hello, and welcome to the Knitting Traditions Podcast. <clears throat> my name is Inga, and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about my knitting. Today, I'm coming to you again from the cabin. I am up here with my dad currently, and Nellie, who is sleeping right next to me, so I'm trying to not wake her so I can record this episode. If she wakes up, I'm sure I can give her to my dad. Um, I spent the weekend up here with my friend and her baby. Her child is six months old and uh, we just had a lovely time knitting, soothing the babies <laughs> um, and she taught me how to make sourdough bread so I'm currently also making my second round of sourdough bread for breakfast. Um, but I have some knitting to show you, so I really wanted to check in. I am wearing a new finished object. And I'll try to record a little b-roll after this. Yes. <laughs> this is the Badger and Bloom by Anna, Anna Wenzel. Um, she's a Danish designer. She's currently battling breast cancer, um, and I hope that it's going well. She has many beautiful designs, this being one of them. And this one I have been wanting to knit for years and then I had some drops air in my stash. Drops air is not used in the pattern but it can be used. I think Camarosa is the yarn used originally. Um, I watched uh, Freya from More Knits, I think is her YouTube handle, and she did some modifications and I followed the similar ones. Um, oh. okay. She did, um, there's second increases happened around here and she did half of those here instead. Um, and it made it fit better and I did the same and it fit really well. I also did the German short rows right after the neck bend in the back um, because I was worried the yoke was going to be very steep and I didn't want that so I did them before rather than after the color work so in case I cut the color work short I could still have a longer yoke in the back. But because my gauge was off, it's supposed to be 16 stitches and mine was 18 stitches. The row gauge was also off, so I actually found that it hit me at a perfect spot. Um, so here is where it splits and my armpit is there. So there's really just like four centimeters, three or four centimeters um, depth, which is fine. Still no problem getting um, a jacket on. Uh, and I found that since my row gauge was off and the yoke wasn't too steep, I also did the German short rows after the color work, so that really worked well for me. I often tend to do more German short rows than a pattern tells me to do, just because I find I need more to make the garment fit better. Um, I did some modifications on the sleeves as well. Uh, the color work is supposed to have this here as well, but I stopped and just did the cuff, so it's like a bracelet length cuff. I found that it would probably be more functional for me in this area of life with diaper changes, whatever. Um, and I did the same for for the body. So I cut the color work short and did the ribbing and it is quite cropped. Um, again, the bead roll, either you've already seen it or I'll show it now. It's very comfortable. I personally have made several garments in the past in Drops Air in like my more beginner knitting days um, and they make really soft garments and it's quite affordable yarn. It peels a lot though so it's not the best quality when it comes to durability but it is really soft or I find it really soft. Um, I'm often a bit itchy when it comes to alpaca, but I don't react to the alpaca content in, in Drops Air. I used four 
balls of the whites and two balls of the charcoal for this and I I feel like I made the fifth size I don't have my notebook with me but I, I made the size with the recommended ease for my bus right now but again my gauge is very off so I have zero ease at the bust I'd say maybe one or two centimeters I, can, I mean I can pull it out but I feel like it lies pretty much on my boobage uh, but I find I like this fit I do I also don't uh, have any decreases on the sleeves I just knit them straight the body knits straight that's how I often go about it and I also did not go down a needle size for the ribbing on um, cuffs or the body because I think the stock in it is knit on five millimeters and the color work is knit on six millimeter needles and my cuffs are also done on six millimeter needles except for the neckline which is what you start with I followed the pattern for that Okay, so that is one finished object. Really, really like this pattern. The color work is very easy. It's just a one by one. Um, so it's very easy to make the pattern bigger or smaller or in between sizes if you want to. It's not as difficult as it looks. Okay. I have another finished object. This is a one by one hat, which I thought was going to be for me. It's some strass yarn I had from Turkey, some chunky gazelle wool acrylic blend that I bought thinking it was wool, but because it wasn't like a wool section of a store, but no. But I've made it before in green and the hat does get a lot of wear because it fits really well. So I counted how many stitches I had done that time and I cast them for another but apparently I must have used a bigger needle size in the past but I couldn't find information for what needle size I had used previously. So this one turned out too small so it became a hat for Nelly that can grow with her because it is super stretchy. So right now if it's more... <laughs> like this with a very thick brim and then as she grows it can just I can just do this and then this in the end I have one more ball and the remains of this ball at home so I can make a matching one for me now this really isn't my color or her color but it is a fun color it's a pop of color and I personally don't think that you have to only wear the color family that suits you. You can wear whatever you want. Now, I prefer wearing things that suit me because it's also the colors that I like. There might be a connection there. Uh, but I also do like a pop of color every now and then. And spring is coming, the lighter days. And I just want it. I just wanted it with color again. It happens every year. Spring comes and all of a sudden... I'm into the bright colors. Yes. Another finished object is this. This is the Lucas Ginzer. I think it's by Trudenitz. I made this for Nelly. Last time I was talking about how I thought I was gonna run out of yarn because I had one sleeve left and I only had three balls of the drops tweed mix in my stash. And I was contemplating getting another ball or using a different color, but um, as predicted, when I had probably, I got into here, I ran out of yarn. So I had one motif left and the ribbing. So what I did is, because this had one more motif and the ribbing was going straight down without decreases. I ripped back and I knit two together throughout the round so I halved the amount of stitches and instead of doing um, the, the motif that I ripped out I just did a longer ribbing and that gave me enough yarn to do the same on this side. So 
The sleeves are as long as they are supposed to be, but they have a cinched in cuff and a longer ribbing to accommodate for having less yarn. And I made it. I made it with uh, three balls of the Drops Tweed mix. And this is supposed to be the one year old size. I've actually not checked my gauge, but um, yeah. Maybe I will do a video at some point about how, what my personal thoughts are when it comes to baby nets and kids nets because I feel like I go against what everyone else on YouTube is often saying. <laughs> For example, I do not think superwash is the way to go. Other people say always go superwash. I do not think I have to measure the child. Other people say measure the child. <laughs> I always just go for a size that I know will be too big and I often make it even longer because I want the items to fit for hopefully more than one season. So it will be worn oversized, sleeves rolled up at first and then as the child grows it will still fit. So that those are my thoughts. <laughs> Uh, so this is a non-superwash yarn. It's soft, um, not like, ooh, soft, but it, it's not scratchy. Um, and it's quite light. I think it's a woolen spun. And it's just a bit of fun with the texture. It's just knits and pearls, except for one motif that has some knits together and yarn, um, not yarn always, but increases. It's a very simple pattern. I don't know if Through the Knits has patterns in English, but if you go on Ravelry, there are several textured um, sweater patterns for children. Drops has some for free. So you can go on there and see if you find something you like if, if this is not accessible to you. So too big now, but it will fit, I think, probably this fall winter coming up. Third, fourth, fourth finished object. Who am I? Did I not just get a baby? <laughs> I do knit fast. That is a benefit. That is why I have so many whips is I knit fast and I knit when she's napping. I tried first to, to nap when she's napping during the day, but I can't. It takes me over an hour to fall asleep and by then she's awake. So doesn't work for me so sleep deprivation coffee here we are this is the aim slipover and i finished this this is my third amy slipover and i love it it has these ties on the sides and it has um a long neck and I can see if I can take it on top of this. This is gonna be so warm, but what don't I do for you guys? So wool on top of wool is not exactly sliding down my back. Okay, so this is the Amy Slipover from Sun is Garn. It's from the Soft Knit for Women magazine from not this past year, but the year before, I think. I've knit several patterns from there. It does exist in English as well. Certain yarn stores around the world will sell it. You can ask your local yarn store. I will also link one below that um, some of you have commented um, has several copies of it, either in US or Canada. I'm not sure. Uh, but good news. I heard that Sun is Garn will sell single patterns as PDFs for upcoming designs on their website, but you do still need to order yarn, but at least it's a way of getting their future designs um, without your local yarn store having to carry the pamphlet. I digress. This is the Amy Slipover. I knit this in um, the silk cashmere and the cashmere tweed from focus from pins in design which is a store outside of bergen and i 
bought exactly the amount of yardage that I would need had I used the original yarn, which I think is some um, Sunday in a silk mohair. Um, because it was a pricier yarn and I didn't want to have too much, but I also didn't want to have too little. And I was worried that I was going to run out because I never know how much these bands take because it is quite a lot of knitting. So I left the neckline for last um, and I knit until I was going to run out and it would either have been a short neck or a long neck. But as you can see, it is, it is quite the long neck. Um, I can fold it over as a turtleneck. I also often just keep it like a straight folded mess. I like it. <laughs> but I actually had to finish before running out of yarn because I thought it was getting quite long. So I still have some yarn left that maybe will go into some scrappy project or maybe I can make something small for Nelly. Um, we'll see. Do you love the color though? This is the color of brun, which means brown. So yes, my Amy slipover. Oh, I'll see if I have a photo I can put up here so you can see it with me standing up because I'm currently sitting on my bed. So those were the finished objects. Let's um, get into the whips while we can. Okay. So, oh, I have like a somewhat finished object. I started my official pre-knit test knit for Laura Penrose for her Stella Quilt blanket. Um, I have, I'm also making a blanket with her Stella Quilt cushion that I'm adapting into a blanket. So I'm knitting the fronts and the backs and sewing them together. But I'm also test knitting with like the recommended thickness of yarn and stitch counts and whatnot. And I finished the first square and it is, um, it's a big one. This is going to be a big blanket. Um, and this is actually so big that I have been using it on top of Nelly as like a little nap blanket. And I've also been folding it. So when she falls asleep on the boob, in the armchair I've put this underneath her head so my hands are free to <laughs> to knit uh, happy days but this is a beautiful pattern I really enjoy knitting on it it takes quite a while because it is a lot of knitting as you can see but it's fun that something is happening all the time and I'm excited to like see how the different colors play up the background yarn that I'm using is Rama Lamel, which is a light fingering and I'm holding it double which makes a yardage of 250 meters per hundred grams so that is what I'm using as like my DK base color and then I'm using other DK single skeins for my stash for the contrast this is a yarn from Nicrate so which is no longer available unfortunately they they are no longer in business. Um, I really wanted this Merlot wine color in the blanket. And the reason I ended up starting with this color is because that was the color that I had with the fewest amount of meters per 100 gram. I think it's 211 meters for this one. So I wanted to make sure that for all of the different skeins, because they're all different brands and midrages of DK weight, um, because it's all packa content, so it's heavier, so less meters per hundred gram. I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't run out with like one triangle left after a lot, a lot of knitting. So I started with the one that had the fewest meters, and I she gives instructions in the patterns on like how to weigh your first square and how many grams it should weigh, and just to be extra sure, I my are two stitches less than in the pattern um, just to be safe <laughs> and I think it's plenty big enough so I'm happy with that decision she also gives instructions for that in the pattern and how to modify it it's a great um, it's a great pattern it's going to be great when it comes out it will be a while but it, it will come out eventually 
so you can start saving up those single skeins in your stash that you don't know what to do with to make yourself an heirloom blanket. And I'm keeping it in my beautiful bag from The Knitting Swan, which I'm an affiliate member of. So if you use the code INGA, you get 10% off and I will link her below. So I have these giant cakes of the Lamel because I bought them on cones and I've just caked them up. So I'm keeping those in here as well as another whip that I will show you shortly because I have started a second, second one which I'm keeping in my tote bag from the Knitting Swan and um, I had this with me in the car and that's why it's in the tote bag because it's easy to put on the, um, the pram when I'm walking around with Nelly. So the second one that I'm doing, I'm doing this beautiful green. I think if I had to choose a green from like for a desert island yarn, this would be my kind of green. It's just stunning. Foresty, dark, moody, heathered green. And this is a yarn from Lore. Um, let's see. This has 250 meters. It's 100% canned lamb's wool, sourced and produced in England from the Fiber Company. And the color is ambitious. Beautiful. Now I have two skeins of this actually. Um, and I might make two of these, or maybe I will make a hat with the other one. I haven't quite decided yet. I got this in France because I had four skeins of lore in my stash. And when I was in Paris, I found it again. And I wasn't 100% sure if it was this shade or the more browny shade. So I got two skeins of this and it was the other one. So um because i wanted to make a cardigan with this yarn and four skeins would not have been enough for a cabled cardigan but now i have enough in the other shade for that and then this goes into the blanket and maybe something else so i have just started the other one and um i'm not done with the first stripe out of the four stripes um there's a lot of ends to weave in and I'm making myself weave it in as I go and also to try and do it neatly because this is not going to have a backing like the pillow one that I'm altering into a blanket will have a backing. This one doesn't have a backing so I'm trying to weave the ends in somewhat neatly. Um, I started with the weave in Steven method down there and I did not think it looked as nice so I didn't do it for the rest. It's gonna be exciting to see how this acts up because it's quite slippery so I feel like it might escape a little bit and I did try to tie little knots as well as weave it in <laughs> to make sure it doesn't run away but the knots are already coming up so I also wove it in. Don't worry. I also do think I will pre-wash this before attaching the squares in the blanket because I have a feeling that it's going to bleed and I don't want it to bleed on all the squares so I'm going to do that. Put it back in. Okay. Now more whips. I have done very little progress on the um, first Impressions Pants by Drops for Nelly. Uh, she wears her brown ones almost daily and they're already, I mean, they're, they're plenty long enough on the legs, but I do wish I would have made them even longer on the stomach area. So I'm going to do that for this pair, which is supposed to be the 12 to 18 month size. I'm going to make it even longer because um, she's a long baby. making noises about... I wonder if she's waking up. Okay, so 
So I'm going to talk more about um, this one next time when I have some more progress. Um, yes. I have gotten a little bit more done on the woolen bib that I'm making for her. Uh, this is a very simple design. It's basically a Carter shawl with a border that you knit on as you bind off. Um, I talk about it in the previous episode, but you increase on each side every row and in the center, on each side of the center stitch on every second row until it's big enough. So I just measured it up against a different bib that I have. It's gonna attach in the back with some um, pressure buttons. And uh, the border is quite simple. It's made with yarn overs and knit two togethers and slip slip knit to, to kind of move along the live edge. I can write it below how to do it if anyone's interested uh, so I am just yeah working on the border which takes a little bit of time this is what I work on in the morning when she is falling asleep so usually I get one little triangle done and then she decides that she doesn't want to fall asleep so it's taking it's taking a little bit of a while to do this, um, but it is it is getting there. And I am using some New Zealand lamb's wool from Gil. This is the undyed number three base. And I'm gonna have even more. Uh, this goes a long way. I have made the blanket. I have made the hat, the barely bonnet, and now this. So maybe I'll make some slippers for her feet or a strap or a pacifier or something. I'll have more left. Yes. Or maybe I can squeeze out another barely bonnet. Because that is the most used hat by far that we have. The barely bonnet in this yarn. But yes, that is a slow width. I might, if it's, it's, look, it's looking a little bit big. If it is, I might intentionally felt it a little bit. Um, it might also felt over time with use, with spit ups and the washing machine, um, on a wool program or delicate program even. We'll see. Um, I could do two different, um, like push buttons so that it can be adjustable sizing. I will have to think about it. I think I'm using three millimeter needles for this. No, 2.5. 2.5 millimeter needles. Okay. More whips. So, um, up until recently, we have been having to carry her around in the evenings to make her not scream <laughs> and fall asleep. She's, she's had some stomach aches and, yeah, just the evenings like that's a phrase for evening agitation but it's gotten better thankfully but when um, we had to walk around um, so much I was walking with her on the walking pad and I decided to knit a sock while I walk with her so this is my twister sister attachment for yarn. Um, I will link their store below. This was gifted to me a while back, but I use it a lot when I want to walk with my knitting because it is really smooth um, as you knit the, the ball goes around. Now my yarn is a little bit of a mess because I didn't um, put the center right, but it's very simple. You push push this through the ball and push this into it and it attaches. This is the beginnings 
of a sock tube and 64 stitches I think I used and 2.5 millimeter needles and I am just going to knit on this when I am walking with her uh, at the cabin I haven't been doing that so this hasn't gotten a lot of progress but it will eventually and I wanted to show you the ball band this is some self-striping yarn from the Stripey Cat Yarns and this is the color way book three inspired by Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I am a huge fan of Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Vikings, all of those kind of action fantasy historical -y series. So I got more than one um, sock yarn set from her, from the Harry Potter collection. So this is the book three. And it was just feeding my need for a spring cast on, a colorful cast on. That is exactly what it is. And I'm having to restrain myself from knitting on it all the time because I do really want it to be um, Walk With Melly knit. And just see how it progresses when I'm at home. Um, which well, maybe tonight we are driving back home to pick up Matias, and then we're going back to the cabin tomorrow. <laughs> and so maybe I'll get some knitting on it tonight. I have a new whip that you have not seen, and it's gotten quite far already. This is the Pokhara sweater by Linka Newman from her book um, with beautiful knits for children. Um, I'll see if I can put put this, a screenshot of it up here. I am knitting this up in the size two year old for Nelly. Um, I bought some yarn for it at the Hillsbog Mill because they had these colorways in their like sale bin together with an orange which was brighter than this one but they had a sample in a store that used these two but this more rusty orange instead of the bright orange so i did buy 50 grams of this to go for the color work and then they didn't have like a white white on sale they had more of a beige one um so I bought that on sale, enough for a sweater quantity for me, but also enough for, for Nelly. But when I got home, I decided that I really did want it to be that nice lighter white for this color work. So the yellow didn't um, disappear too much. And I had this yarn in my stash that I got from a store in Turkey. This is 100% uh, natural fibers, non-superwash. It's the natural undyed colors from Gazal, Baby Alpaca Pure Colors. It's 55% Baby Alpaca and 45% Merino, 100 grams, 320 meters. And this is so soft. Um, it feels almost like cashmere soft. It is very soft. So I was going to cast on the one-year-old size, but as I was casting on, I'm feeling just how soft it felt. And knowing that I had a lot of the contrast yarn, I figured, you know what, I'm going to do the two-year-old size in case by the age of two-year-old she's starting to be more picky with what she wants to wear, then this is really soft and hopefully she'll love it. So I'm doing the two-year-old size. And I have knitted as instructed to pattern its bottom up, which is not my favorite, but okay. So I've done the body and the sleeves, uh, and I am now working on the color work. I am not enjoying the color work because it is uh, three colors at a time, so it's not it's not the easiest to work with tensioning and catching floats so I've kind of just given up on catching floats <laughs> and we'll see how it goes uh, and how uneven the result will be hopefully it'll block out nicely um, 
but yeah it's three colors at a time for a lot of the color work and there's also going to be duplicate stitches around the sunflower here with the orange afterwards so it could be four colors at a time if you don't want to do that but the pattern says to duplicate stitch that in afterwards so I've done the first set of decreases on the yoke so hopefully it gets a little bit better now but yeah it's going to be very cute and um, hopefully maybe next spring it will fit as well as a bit of an oversized and if not the season after I'm not too fuzzy about sizing. So that is all of the whips that I have put progress into since last time. I have some acquisitions to show. Um, and I, I, um, I went to the food store here with my friend when we got up here to buy some groceries for the cabin. And there was a local lady at the store who was selling hand knits and hand sewn garments for kids for like ten dollars a garment which is crazy um so i got this one for nelly just because i thought it was so cute and it would save me from having to make it myself i have no idea what the pattern is but it is some cardigan in cotton with some lace on the bottom and some coconut buttons and I just thought it was so cute and it looks great together with her brown ribbed pants she looks like a little banana split kid <laughs> so yeah it's uh, quite big on her now but it's something that she can wear for probably the next few months into the summer towards the fall so that was a nice little find and um, I also bought a pair of pants that she had made this I think is six month old size uh, in Norway a lot of people knit these kind of pants for their kids for kindergarten because they are just a great wool layer for kids and a lot of people use their scrap yarns for these kind of pants um, and I just know that what I want more for her are wool pants. So I bought this. One thing less I have to make. And this is made in Dustura Alpaca Sterk, which is a mix of alpaca, merino, and nylon. Yeah, it's the six month old size. So this is going in, it's too big now, but um, it will fit for the fall. Yes, and then I received a parcel from Ivana. She has the Republic of Me podcast here on YouTube, which you really should check out. She has a beautiful cinematic style with like voiceovers and talking parts and she makes beautiful things and she inspires me so much. She has inspired me to try spinning and weaving and all the crafts that I don't have the time for, but I want to do. And she is so sweet. She sent me her hand spun yarn and it is just absolutely stunning. And she sent me enough to make a sweater for myself, probably. And knowing how long it takes me to spin a hundred grams of fiber, this is something extremely heartwarming to think that she has made all of this and sent it to me. Look at this. Oh, and it smells so good. Hmm. And this, I believe she wrote that this was the undyed. So it's 100% Shetland. Yeah, in natural color. And I just love it. I just love it. I can't get enough of the natural browns. And I just need to figure out what this will be. It will be my first hand spun 
minutes. Ever. <laughs> so thank you, Ivana. It's beautiful. I couldn't, I couldn't have imagined something so beautiful. And it just feels so special to me. I can't get over it. Oh, yes. So since she's still sleeping, a lot of people wanted to hear about how it went with the birth and everything. So I figured I would do a little um, session now at the end talking about it. And I wanted to have something to knit on. I think I'll knit on the, the ripped pants. So, um, I work as a doctor in labor and delivery, and I gave birth in the same um, place as I work. <laughs> and um, I had a normal pregnancy. I was healthy. She was healthy. I mean, I struggle with all kinds of pregnancy-related um, things that are normal, but I, I was healthy, like not sick. And then um, her growth measurements were putting her above the 19th, 90th percentile, um, very close to 97th, which is where we recommend induction at 38 weeks because the child is, what, what would be the English word, expected to be very big <laughs> at the due date. Uh, I was very close to it, but always below. Um, both me and Matthias are, have, are three, out of three siblings, and nobody was above four kilos. Everyone was, I think the average was like 3.7, 3.8 kilos. Um, she was looking to be at least 4.3 kilos. And um, working in labor and delivery, I see all the complications, everything that goes wrong. And that was definitely making me worried about delivering a big baby. Uh, <laughs> I really didn't want to get induced because that brings its own complications. So it was kind of like a, I don't want to do either. So a middle ground. We decided that I would have another checkup with an ultrasound just to see how big she was. Because that was kind of it for me. If she was already very big, I would rather be induced than deliver a very big baby <laughs> for me very big I think um, so the ultrasound showed that she was already around 4.3 4.4 like five days before my due date so that kind of convinced me like yeah okay we can just get this started and everything was already quite mature there was already like three centimeters opening and it was uh, possible to do an amniotomy which is where you uh, prick a little hole in the amniotic sac and the water breaks so don't give artificial hormones but your body has a chance to go into labor on its own and the criteria for doing that was was met so it was quite mature for being a first time pregnant mom um, but, uh, yeah, so we did the amniotomy and then I didn't get contractions on my own. So we hung up a drip. So uh, oxytocin, syntocinone, it has many names, pitocin. Uh, we hung up a drip, which creates artificial contractions and I got an epidural and everything was fine. I was still moving around. The epidural wasn't great. It only took half, half the side. Um, but you know, it was fine. I was breathing the, the happy gas and everything was good. Um, she was fine the whole way. Uh, <laughs> we changed the epidural and it worked on the other side, but not on the side that it previously had worked on. So yeah and uh yeah we started in the morning and by late evening i think yeah we changed the epidural again so third time and now i felt like it didn't work at all so yeah but it was quite a long 
long process uh, 26 27 hours from starting until she was out um, and she was fine the whole way I was in quite a bit of pain like bone pain and um, like vaginal pain so I got a pudendal loved the pudendal block I can't praise it enough <laughs> It was amazing um, but by the morning uh, I was fully dilated 10 centimeters but I wasn't really feeling um, like the pressure contractions I mean I was feeling the contractions trust me I was feeling it but I she wasn't far enough down in the pelvis to feel the urge to push and the epidural had basically paralyzed one of my legs so I was like locked in bed um so that wasn't fun um but I personally would rather be locked in bed than be in more pain than I was so I was grateful for for the pedendal and the epidural and everything um but yeah so she she wasn't far enough down for me to to feel the urge to push so we were just trying to push on pure will but the contractions from the drip were not great they were way too short not powerful enough and i was exhausted after being in labor for so long so by the end of it i was basically begging the midwife to ask my colleagues to come down and help me get the baby out with a vacuum um and that was so strange because that is like the least thing that I wanted like that was something that I was very worried about in like the talks that I had before delivery um for my like delivery anxiety I was very scared of having to do like an operational delivery with vacuum or the forceps or anything I really did not want that I did not want to see my colleagues at all and then at the end of the delivery I was basically begging for it because I felt to my bones that I did not have the energy left I couldn't even keep my eyes open at the end um I could yeah I could hardly talk <laughs> uh I was trying with all my might to push when I didn't feel like pushing but yeah no it did not work so in the end they did come because it had been so long and it wasn't progressing and I was exhausted and yeah so it was a vacuum delivery no complications um they did have to do an episiotomy bless the pedendal <laughs> and yeah she was screaming instantly she was not as big as anticipated she was four kilos plus a little bit um but my pelvic bones definitely felt that she was plenty big enough i had a lot of pain in my tailbone and my pelvis for the next two weeks like a lot of pain um so the pain after the delivery was worse than the 27 hours of of yeah but um yeah except for like that last 30 minutes where i felt like this isn't going to work and i felt quite you know desperate disappointed in myself um desperate for help that is like the key word there except for those 30 minutes i felt like it was a fine process but um yeah could have been without those last 30 minutes of feeling like this isn't gonna work and I want help faster <laughs> but yeah she was a healthy baby four point something kilos um less than 4.1 so somewhere between there and 52 centimeters long I think her head was 36.5 centimeters in circumference so yeah similar to what i was when i was born just heavier she had some really good chunky cheeks so they did have to um put my when i when the head was out my knees were behind my head to get the shoulders out so they it was good to have the assistance 
in the room when I needed it. Um, I felt very safe and cared for during my whole stay and I really don't mind giving birth at the place where I work because I trust my colleagues and they are wonderful. It was quite um, a lot of people admitted during the days when I was um, in the hospital afterwards. I got good help with breastfeeding so that everything was working by the time we went home. Um, I felt quite weak. I lost quite a bit of blood. I had no appetite. So just having um, people around to to help me get on like the right track to go home and Matthias and everything was really nice. And when we got home, Matthias was so nice and supportive. He has made every meal basically since we gave birth <laughs> and he's cleaning the house and taking care of us. So feeling very blessed there. And uh, yeah, I'm at the cabin for the second time, just so you know, he's also working now, so he has time to focus on work and just recuperate a little bit. And then I have people here helping with me, me with Nelly. And then he's coming up and we're having a long weekend together as a family, which is gonna be great. I am staying home with Nelly for, so in Norway, um, the government pays for maternity leave 100% or 80% of the salary uh, for up until 600,000 kroners. Um, but a lot of workplaces, if you have a salary higher than that, will pay the differential. Um, if you choose the 100%, like I do, um, it's about seven months at home if the mom takes the joint pot. So I don't remember the exact week math, but let's say the mom gets 15 weeks, the dad gets 15 weeks, and then there's 15 weeks of like a joint pot that you can share however you want to. And usually the mom takes the entire shared pot because breastfeeding is encouraged and going back to work and breastfeeding is not gonna work. Not for me. I have 26 hour shifts. Bye bye breastfeeding. Um, so I am doing my pot and the joint pot. The father's pot is not possible for the mom to get, which is quite frustrating if the parents would like um, the mom to breastfeed for a year. Um, the father has to take his weeks and if he doesn't take them, they're just lost. This is uh, done by the government to have more equality in the workplace so that when a couple has a child, it's not just the women who are out of work for a period, but also the men. So it's not going to discriminate. But I mean, the women are still more out of work than the men. There is still discrimination happening and now the parents cannot decide what, you know, so we personally feel like the mom should have more time because the government also says you should breastfeed for a year now i know that this is very privileged a lot of countries have a lot less maternity leave um but i think it could still be better i mean the time with children is precious and they need us and i I want to be home the first year. I would ideally like to be home for the first two years with my child. I feel like going to kindergarten at one year old is quite young, but um, we can't afford that. We live in a society where both parents have to work and make a living to cover the mortgages and loans and everything. And um, yeah, by the time we got pregnant, our lifestyle with our loans and mortgages requires us both to work. So. I do have to go back to work, but I have been saving up. So after those seven months of paid maternity leave, I am going to do three months of unpaid maternity leave just so I can stay home with her and breastfeed her. And uh, that is not without risk because when you do take unpaid maternity leave, you you use you lose a lot of your rights. Um, so I have to go back to work and work for a certain amount of time to earn the rights for sick leave and those kind of benefits again. So hopefully 
I don't get sick. I have been healthy this far in my life, so we are just going to take the chance so that I can stay at home with her. And we also don't know when we're going to get a kindergarten spot because you have, in Norway, you are entitled to a spot when the kid is one year old, but the admittance to kindergarten is usually in August and she was born at the end of January. So she's not going to be admitted when she, this August. Um, so if she doesn't get a spot next January, but I have to wait until August. That means she's at home until she's 1.78 months. I, I can't do math. And uh, yeah, we have to work. We can't, I can't afford to be home that long. Neither can he. And yeah, it's difficult to make it all work so we're hoping we get a kindergarten spot and if not we're gonna have to get creative okay. oh. she's waking up all right so hey <laughs> tired i am going to go check on the sour bread dough and cuddle my baby <laughs> yes and I hope that you are well, and I hope to talk to you again soon, and yeah, have a lovely time. Bye!